Sufi terminology part 2. I had spoken certain Sufi terminologies that are used along the path. Along the path there is a trinity of Sufi tariqat known as Zikr, Fikr, Mara. Zikr means remembrance of that which is so that the heart center opens, the kalp gets involved. This is the first of the trinity. The second is Fikr. Fikr literally refers to contemplation, meditation, introspection on the words of the Master. You hear it, but you really do not hear. Certain things you hear and certain things you do not. Also according to your level of understanding, level of consciousness, you grasp certain part of the message, the rest you do not understand. Constantly contemplating on the words of the Master forms the second edifice of Sufi terminology. I have heard about Zen Master. In his monastery lived a disciple. One day, along with other disciples, one day one of the disciples sought the permission of the Master that he want to go to see the polo match going nearby. He went to the Master, gave him the permission, he went to the ground to watch the polo match. When he returned, the Master inquired, were the players tired? He immediately responded, yes, the players were very tired. Then he asked, were the horses also tired? You will get a setback at this question. You know, because you are a human, you know humans get tired. But you never heard anyone asking if the horses were tired. He took time. Very reluctantly he said, it seems the horses were also tired. In a game of polo, we use poles that each player uses. So then the master inquired, were the poles tired too? The disciple could not understand that and he did not respond. How could the players, the humans can get tired? Maybe the horses too can get tired. But how can poles get tired? How could chair, table, the bed can get tired? He could not answer it. He went back to sleep. Whole night he could not sleep. He was tossing and turning, contemplating on the words of the Master. If the Master had asked the question, there has to be a reason in it. And he knows right. Maybe I have not been able to understand the message of the Master. I very easily said the players were tired. But I was reluctant to say if the horses were tired. But I did not know how could poles be tired. Whole night he remained tossing and turning. As the last star was ready to disappear in the oblivion. And a new dawn, a dawn was in the offing. He rushed to the cottage of the master. Master was outside waiting for the disciple. He bowed down to the master and asked, Would you repeat the question again? The master asked, Were the players tired? He said, Yes. Then he asked, Were the horses tired? He said, Yes. Then he asked, Were the poles tired too? He said, Yes, indeed. The master said, When I inquired from you about the players, you was not reluctant to you, immediately said, yes, players were tired. When I inquired about the horses, you was reluctant, but you answered. But you did not answer about the poles. When you are awakened, you are one with the entire existence. It is the same noor that pulsates, that manifests through every creature on the sentient or insentient. The very purpose of awakening is you realize we are part of that which we call God, 
اور اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ اور نور اور لائٹ اور ایکسسٹنس اور کانشیسنس اور وٹ ایور اٹ از وین دس ہیپنس یو فیل اے کمپلیٹ یونیفیکیشن ود ایوری تھنگ ان دی ایکسسٹنس سینشنٹ اینڈ ان سینشن دین یو آر ٹوٹلی اویکنڈ دس از کولڈ فکر اور constant contemplation or introspection on the words of the master when i was 16 or 17 my father wanted me to study the science subject for bsc physics chemistry mathematics because i always i had already closed the possibility of being a doctor so he wanted me to study but my interest was not in that i told him that i am not interested in these subjects i am not interested in being a doctor or any high position i would be happy if i am a beggar on the street making my living doing ordinary things he did not like this so i was under his control he forced me to study bsc one year i failed second year i failed third year when i was going to take the other subject which my uncle the sufi master had asked he said if you cannot study physics chemistry and mathematics then there is no need to study anything then my uncle wrote me a couplet in a letter that meant me autumn bring a new portrait to the spring what is the will of my master i know it not that was simply oh very nice the master has sent me a letter and in that he wrote a couplet shayad khiza se ho koi nayi surat bahar ki kuch maslahat isi mein hai mere parwardigar ki may autumn bring a new portrait to the spring and what is the will of my master i know it not it was a source of enjoyment that the master wrote me a letter with a couplet so on the surface i understood that he wrote a letter but i continued to contemplate on those words and then when i was writing the books and now i explain what happens in that whenever anybody will bow down or touch the feet according to the hindu tradition of paying respect to elders my grandmother never said as we do god bless it seems that the person who says god bless is a secretary or custodian of god and on behalf of god he can bless you then the she always used to say be always happy be always happy sada sukhi raho be always happy so i ask why do you say things like that is she told me you and ask too many questions you should inquire yourself then i realized that this is a sufi commandment 12th commandment happiness is a choice every moment a circumstance or situation comes to you and in that you have an option or choice to be happy or not to be happy when you accept it as a divine will or god's will you are happy you are flowing with that if you do not agree and you consider that no this is not right that means you are not in harmony with it and still you consider yourself to be the religious person all the religious person have their do's and don'ts no you should not act like that this should be according to scriptures this should be this way and you know in the bible it is said so it is quran it is said so and that all this is all rubbish anything that is happening is happening because of the will of allah subhanahu wa taala or god remember god exists in you in the form of consciousness when it is said that god took the light from the forehead of hazrat apa gambar sallallahu alaihi wasallam and put it inside the man how can you put the light light is a symbol and it is the consciousness and when consciousness manifests through your body mind and intellect realm it is through the intellect that light which is consciousness works through your intellect 
and through your mind, then the actions happen through your body. Mind does not act. Whenever there is an engineer or architect, architect first makes the plan or the design or the model of the building that he has to build in his mind. So he knows this is it. Then he brings it out on the piece of paper. Still it is maybe two-dimensional, but it is not three-dimensional. Then he makes a wooden model of it, which everybody can see and understand in the same way. First, consciousness acts on your intellect and the mind. It gives a shape. Then through the body you act and the process continues. So when a particular circumstance or situation comes, according to your consciousness of the light, you act or respond to it. Then comes your action. You have a choice to accept it or not to accept it. When you accept it, that let thy will prevail. That is a simple, a very simple aphorism of Jesus. Jesus is master of parables or aphorisms. And they are very simple but very intricate as far as they are meaning is concerned. Let thy will prevail. What does it mean? When Jesus was going to be crucified, he was hanged. He was being hanged on the cross. He complained. The man in Jesus complained, Father, why have you forsaken me? He was expecting that I am the only begotten Son of God. God will come and take me down from the cross and his angels will come, but nothing like that happened. And there were three other thieves being hanged along with him. Then the next moment, the Christ in him is born. The Christ in him says, let thy will prevail. In that very moment, as soon as the thought came to him, let thy will prevail, Jesus became enlightened. Jesus became no more the son of Mary and Joseph. Instead, he became the son, the only begotten son of God, Christ. Christ was, was born in him. Let thy will prevail. And that's an important statement. That's the last statement of Jesus. Let thy will prevail. When you are in harmony with all that, a different kind of bliss, different kind of surur comes to you. And you flow with that. The, the words become aglow and they start revealing their intrinsic value and the meaning to you your journey becomes very simple, easy. This is known as fit and it is important part. Zikr prepares you, but if you continue at the level of Zikr, you are going, to, going nowhere. The person says, you are knocking at the door, open the door, I am coming. And then you continue to sing in the form of Zikr, open the door, open the door. And the man says, door is open. He said, but where is the door? I am not seeing it open. And you continue to do your zikr. The moment heart center is invoked, you have to go in. And when you go in, you have to start flowing in a different direction. Then the state of suluk comes in. The heart is the center of just emotions. Emotions, earlier your emotions were frozen, putrefied. Emotions becomes fluid-like. Now, the fluid has to get form steam and soar high in the sky. This is the state of Marak. Zikr, Fikr, Marakba form the trinity or the edifice of Sufi terminology or Sufi tariqa. You must begin with Zikr. When you continuously do the Zikr, in the beginning you remember you are because of the clatter of the mind you are not capable of listening the constant sound that exist in the existence. You are not able to hear the small voices. So Zikr prepares you. When the heart center is invoked, that does not mean that you have to stop the, uh, the Zikr. Instead, the form changes. Earlier on, you were using the labial sound to, listen, to create the sound. 
and when you created the sound out of your labial method you are listening to now when the heart center is invoked you are not continuing to do use the labial method to create the sound instead the subtle sound that constantly happening in the cosmos and the universe you are listening to it for the first time you are listening to the small voices and that is where the form of zikr changes from zikr zahr to zikr khafi means silent it is constantly happening you do not feel the heartbeat unless there is an instrument that or you are so silent that you can feel the sound of your heartbeat or flow of the blood or the incoming and the outgoing breath but because of the noise you cannot hear you are creating this sound to resemble the sound of the heartbeat but when the noise the clatter of the mind is silenced you can hear this subtle sound that is constantly happening the sound of the heartbeat the sound of the breath coming in and breath going out this is known as zikr khafi which is constantly happening when you are capable of listening to that which is constantly happening which is effortlessly happening then you are in the realm of zikr khafi that continues then marappa these are the three edifice or trinity of sufi tariqat i thought that i will take on today six uh, subtleties according to the quranic verses they refer to lataif e sit or six subtleties nafs kal ru sir khafi and akafa these are lataifs designate various psycho spiritual organs or faculties for sensory perception